Um, I recommend that the African Union um, should, in, in, should empower women of Africa uh, in different ways and means. Uh, first of all, um, the, uh, the, there should be a focus on education and training and capacity building of women who, uh, who show interest in that field. That means uh, that they have a good academic background and they have the personality of leadership and they have uh, the capacity of following up this career, not just taking it halfway. So this is one track that we should focus on, which is education and training. The second track is empowering of NGOs who are uh, all over Africa and they are women organizations who uh, can um, support these kind of women because uh, a woman needs uh, support all through her life. So not only uh, by education, but also by, uh, during her career and during her family uh, life, because she cannot give up one. She has to do both. So this is one thing that also the AU can do, which is uh, the, um, like, uh, uh, empowering or uh, like uh, um, giving a lot of support to the NGOs who are uh, supporting women leaders in the African continent. And also not to uh, forget about uh, the, the problems of each area, like each uh, region has its own problems. So like before we used to say uh, we are not in conflict and we don't need uh, to be a part of the African standby force for instance but now we, are, we, we think that we are in need so African standby force is also under AU and it is very important that it empowers the NARC which is the North African Brigade under the African standby force it has a civilian component, it has a women component, and this is not very well uh, addressed by AU. So this is my third um, recommendation for AU. Well, uh, women all, always are victims of uh, conflicts. So they, they have uh, other dimensions that the man, when uh, war is launched, uh, they, they, they do not uh, think about it. it's going to happen. So a woman uh, uh, will know the repercussions for her and for her family and for her society, for her community. And this is what happened, for instance, in Darfur, in Sudan. Who, who are the, the, those uh, who are suffering? Um, they are the women and the children and the families. The, no schools, no universities, no, um, like the normal life is stopped. So this is what uh, women bring to the negotiating table. What are the reaction, uh, the, what are the repercussions of war to the community or to the society? How are the families going to um, uh, going to survive? How, uh, like, uh, uh, if, if there are refugees, if there are um, displaced women, if uh, and there are many uh, who are who continue to be living in um, in disastrous situations for many years, and this is one point that is always uh, looked upon by women. Also the fact that a woman is, uh, is um, uh, a victim of uh, sexual violence in wars and in conflict zones. This is uh, not really addressed properly when a man is addressing this problem. A woman can uh, relay her problems and relate to her uh, aftermath of the conflict more than the man. This is how she should be part of the negotiation table 
so that she can um, address the issues that concerns her, her family, her children and her society. Well, it, it cannot happen all of a sudden. It has to happen gradually. First, we have to acknowledge her role as a leader in her society. Then we have to encourage her to take a, a, not a subordinate uh, uh, place, but a medium role, but a, a higher role. Then um, she can move from informal to formal when she has established her connections, her networking, her um, uh, all her um, she can do strategic alliances with other men informally also until she is able to be uh, placed in a formal um, setting. But it doesn't happen. But I, I really um, would like to see the woman doing both, like have, being in the informal and networking with her also other women and other men and at the same time, uh, when the political will is not there, then the formal will never come. So how to influence the political will is through the informal setting.